like to talk to you about homoscedasticity. And so homoscedasticity is really about um, the error rate that we have in using our X variable to predict our Y variable. So here I have the example of study hours and the X axis predicting test score on our Y axis. And so let's say, and I'm just gonna pick a red color here. Let's say I just pick one particular value of X. M maybe I'll pick 10 here. And if I'm, well, that's not really at 10. Let me see if I can actually get on 10. So here's 10. <laughs> And if I'm looking at this distribution of scores, you see that there's a range of scores here. But if I were to draw a distribution like that, let me move this distribution over here. So hopefully this looks familiar to you. It looks like a normal distribution. And remember when we have a normal distribution, we can go one standard deviation above and below. And that would mean um, the 34, 14, 2. Hopefully this is triggering a memory, right? And so this mean value here is actually, this is where we set our predicted value of y. So this is just for x scores that have, that are at 10. And so for only people who have a score of 10, I'm gonna just look at their exam scores. Sorry, let me back up. For only people who studied 10 hours, I'm just looking at people who studied 10 hours and no one else. Then I have the average exam score for people who studied 10 hours. Now, some people did above that and some people did below that, but the mean um, value for the exam scores is where we put the predicted value of Y for people with an X score of 10. So that means that the mean of this distribution is gonna be right where our Y hat is. So you see how I did this distribution for just those who studied 10 hours? Now let's do just those who studied, let's say five hours. So if I have a distribution of the, ugh, it's not right on, I'm getting uh, off with my drawing. Uh, if I'm just looking at people who have just studied five hours, then I'm, I'm also gonna be able to draw that normal distribution. And the mean of that normal distribution, again, is gonna be right where my predicted value for Y would be for only people who studied five hours. And so what I want you to see is that I can draw this distribution for each value of X. So as I move up the scale, the mean um, at each of these points in the distribution is where the line um, is going to be at the predicted value. And so just like I did here, where I can go up and down one standard deviation, I'm gonna do that for these distributions. And, and I'll put that in, in green here. So let's say I go up one standard deviation here, and I go down one standard deviation here, and I go up and down and up and down. If I were to connect these green lines, I want you to think about how those green lines would be related to this dotted blue line, which is our regression model. So if I connect these lines, hopefully you see that they would be parallel to the blue line. And what that's saying is, if I don't know anything about how you're going to perform, my best guess for you is to use the mean at that point. And then I could be off one standard deviation above or below that mean. But what you can see is using the mean for each X value shows that my error rate, my standard deviation is the same for each value of X. In other words, this is one standard deviation above the, the line, and this is one standard deviation below the line. You see how these lines are parallel, which means my error rate, how wrong I am, is the same for every value of x that I have along this distribution. That is the assumption of homoscedasticity. So let me show you what distributions look like when they violate homoscedasticity. So in this distribution, we have, um, let's say we have scores, I'm just trying to make an X because it's hard to see the little dots, but let's say we have scores like this. And then as we get further up in the distribution, they kind of start to look like this. So when I'm looking at this distribution, I can see that here's our overall error rate down for low values of X, but see how it gets wide for larger values of X? This means that if I were to take one standard deviation above and below the mean, it'd be a small range for lower values of X, but it'd be a wide range for higher values of X. This violates homos the assumption of homoscedasticity. 
Homoscedasticity doesn't require that there be a small error rate. It just requires that the error rate be the same for all values of x. So if I had something that had a really large error rate, something where they're really spread out, they're all spread out, but see how the spread is the same for all values of x? This one is um, OK for the assumption of homoscedasticity. It has homoscedasticity. If I have a distribution that has very little error rate, this one has very little error rate. See how skinny it is? Knowing my x value is very predictive of your y value. But because it's the same width across every value of x, this one also manages to keep the assumption of homoscedasticity. Homoscedasticity is violated when you have a wide range at one part of the distribution and a skinny range at another. And now it doesn't just have to be this way. It could be um, scores that look like um, maybe a range like this where it's wide, skinny, right? This would not be good for homoscedasticity because it means you'd be very accurate here and then inaccurate here. But what we are looking for for using the least squares regression model is that the error rate for every value of x is the same. So we have the roughly the same standard deviation in our error of prediction is the same for every value of x. So it's not going to be wide in some values of x and small in other values of x.